into the concert like that, and, and after everybody finished singing, he goes, now that's Christian music. <laughs> uh, well, uh, welcome back, everybody. Um, we got uh, a few shopkeeping things uh, really quick before we kick in. Uh, the concert, uh, the, uh, okay, let me get my head around what I need to talk about. I, mean, I want to thank a few people uh, before we get going. First of all, thanks so much to the folks here at Southern Seminary for bringing us in. It takes a lot of work to put on a show like this, so, and they worked really hard and did a great job today. Thank you guys for bringing us in. Second of all, uh, our friend Harold Rubens, he's the sound guy on this tour. Uh, he's as much a part of the band as anybody on the stage. He does an amazing job. Thank you, Harold, for being here. Thank you, Harold. Uh, Harold uh, is a, works with a sound company that does these in-ears West Tone, and uh, he, he, he provide, they were able to provide some of the ears for this tour, and so thank you to West Tone for making this tour possible. These things are amazing. I'm confident that we sound better with them than without, so thank you for those guys. I need to quickly introduce the band over here on uh, behind Andrew Osenga uh, is Mr. Gabriel Scott. Gabe has been a part of this tour since uh, we first thought it up. Gabe was there when we were on the road together about 13 or 14 years ago uh, when this idea popped up to do a concert like this. And he's been there from the beginning. He's arranged a lot of the songs. Tonight he's playing the acoustic guitar, the dobro, and the hammer dulcimer. Please welcome Mr. Gabe Scott. Tour manager. He's also the drummer for the band Caveman's Call, and he also has a killer beer. We love this guy a lot. Please welcome Mr. Todd Bradman. We also drum with other people, not just Caveman's Call. Yeah, and tour around. Okay, so then next to next to Todd on the drums tonight, uh, the guy sitting back here is uh, uh, a great guy. Uh, he's played on a lot of my CDs and uh, played with all kinds of people over the years. He's a he's also the most compulsively neat person I know. I remember once I was at his house and he wasn't there, and I opened the fridge and I saw little bowls of frozen M and M's, and and I ate an M and M, and then I thought, I bet he knows how many M and M's there are. <laughs> so I really an IOU for the M and M's that I ate, so I wouldn't be mad. Uh, please welcome Mr. Paul Eichberg on the drums. Great record producer. He, he produced Jill's last two records, uh, works with Katie Herzig, a lot of other people like that. He, he and Ben and Andy and I are all going to go in the studio in January to make a, a new CD of mine, and I can't wait to work with him again. Please welcome Mr. Casey Kulu. Casey <laughs> also happens to look like Frodo. And, uh, that, <laughs> And then uh, next to Kaysen, uh, Chella, she's a, they, you guys have been on the road with Katie Herzig a lot, but you play with all kinds of people. She's a great cello player, and uh, we're so thankful to have her on the tour. Please welcome Miss Claire Indy. So, uh, so part of the reason that I'm, that I'm talking is because there was a, a long line for the ladies' restroom, and they were all like, don't start yet, please. So, uh, so really quick, I'm going to read this entire book to you. This, have you guys heard of this, the Jesus story of the Bible? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's my favorite uh, Bible for children. It's, it's obviously it's not an actual translation. It's a telling of the story of Jesus, and it it conveys uh, the thing that kind of blew my mind in Bible college. Uh, it conveys it really well for children. I've read this to all of my kids multiple times, and I've probably cried more uh, reading this book than uh, than like. The Lion, the Wish, and the Wardrobe, or books like that. Like this book just profoundly has moved me over the years. And so, uh, that, you know, the, the idea for this concert, um, the germ of the idea came when uh, I was sitting in an Old Testament survey class in Bible college. And I, like I said, my dad is a pastor, and uh, I grew up going to VBS and Sunday school and church camp and youth group, the whole thing. And somehow, I missed it. <laughs> Happens to a lot of people. I don't know how, you know, my dad knows the gospel, he preaches the gospel, he preached from the Old Testament and the New, but somehow I, I just kind of thought of the Bible as this thing that kind of got in the way of the real life that I wanted to live, you know. And, uh, and I would have told you that I was a Christian, but I, I don't know that I, I really appreciated the, uh, the, the, uh, the beauty of the gospel until uh, I was sitting there, uh, well, first I was listening to Rich Mullins' music, and then after that it was, uh, it was sitting in this Bible college class, and we were studying the Old Testament, kind of breezing through the Old Testament my freshman year of Bible college. And, uh, and it was the first time that I ever really 
thought about the fact that Christ is as much a part of the Old Testament as the New Testament. Uh, that he is the main character of the story that God is telling with all of history. Um, in him all things hold together, it says in Colossians. And, uh, and realizing that in, in Bible college, that Christ haunts the Old Testament, that all the things that I was looking for in the Lord of the Rings and Star Wars and all this nerdy stuff was fulfilled in the person of Christ and the pages of Scripture that I've been surrounded with since I was a kid, it just lit me up. And so what we want to do is to tell you that story tonight. Um, uh, if you've never heard the story before, we want to tell it to you. If you've heard the story a thousand times, we want to tell it to you in a way that is going to dust off the cobwebs and help you to see with wonder uh, just how beautiful it is that God became flesh and dwelt among us. And so um, we're going to get started here, but I'm going to read a paragraph uh, from, from this book by Sally Lloyd-Jones, um, and then we'll get started. She says in the first chapter, No, the Bible isn't just a book of rules or a book of heroes. The Bible is most of all a story. It's an adventure story about a young hero who comes from a far country to win back his lost treasure. It's a love story about a brave prince who leaves his palace, his throne, everything to rescue the one he loves. It's like the most wonderful of fairy tales that has come true in real life. You see, the best thing about this story is it's true. I'm a mess tonight, you guys. <laughs> there are lots of stories in the Bible, but all the stories are telling one big story. The story of how God loves his children and comes to rescue them. It takes the whole Bible to tell this story. And at the center of the story, there's a baby. Every story in the Bible 